time because water moves through here very quickly because we don't want to flood our neighborhoods, our suburbs, our farms, etc. So what we've done is we've channelized the rivers. In channelizing, what you do is you reduce connectivity to the floodplain. So now there's not that exchange of nutrients from the water to the land. And so you get, you get a pretty much a homogenous community on the floodplain, uh, all ruderal species, right? Stress tolerator. But you also get disconnected from the riparian zone. And so that's the problem here. And we'll take a few water parameter measurements with the YSI and I'll show you how to use that. <clears throat> but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the D-nets, what Kathy and Daniel have. And the best way to use a D-net, and Dr. Eisen will be along to uh, show you as well, you want to find some structure, okay? And you just kick the net around and try to get up debris. You don't want to get a lot of mud or sediment in there. <clears throat> but when you bring it back up, put it in this sieve. Put the soil in the sieve and we'll have people up here sifting through. If you see something move it, put it in a jar of alcohol, okay? And then we'll, do, we'll identify them on Wednesday. So what you should find here are blood worms, which are uh, what family? Chironomidae. Yeah, chironomidae, but what the... Diptera flies. Yeah, fly. So it's a blood worm. It's, it should look red. So they live in poor oxygenated water. They're an indicator of crappy water quality, but they're found everywhere. So that's not the sole indicator. Um, you should, we should find dragonfly larvae today, so you know the movie Alien. 